live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2017. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. I'm Stu Miniman and this is theCUBE. Happy to welcome back to the program two guests we've had on a few times. Randy Arsenault, who's the CMO of Infinidat, and Brian Carmody, who's the CTO at Infinidat. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Stu, what's going thanks, on? Stu, good to be here. All right, so it's VMworld time again. A lot going on. Uh, we said kind of the vibe of the show already. It's about the same attendance as last year, but the, the vibe feels, feels good. Pat is actually hitting his stride in the keynote, talking about Amazon, talking about momentum that they have. You guys uh, have had some uh, announcements recently. Randy, why don't you start us off? Sure. Tell us about you know, the update of Infinidat, how many customers you've got, what, what, what can you share? So, uh, thanks Stu, thanks for having us again. It's great to, uh, great to be back on theCUBE. So, uh, yeah, we've, over the last uh, few years, three and a half years that we've been shipping a product, we've been able to sustain a really good, consistent cadence of growth, and that's continued into this year. So a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, we announced our uh, most recent performance, financial performance. We're continuing to more than double um, each quarter, year over year. We are profitable from a gap revenue perspective, which is kind of unheard of in our industry, so we think we're breaking the trend of a lot of the uh, storage startups and, and even some established storage players that are having a really difficult time making their financial and business model and go to market work. Ours is clearly working. Uh, we're generating revenue, we're growing our customer base. We now have over two exabytes of storage and service worldwide. Uh, we figured out about 80-ish, 80%, 80 plus or minus a couple of percentage points of that is running VMware. So we think this is kind of an obvious place for us to be in terms of the, uh, the affinities of our customer base. And about 50% of our systems are actually dedicated to VMware, so they're running huge uh, VMware farms. So, the financial performance has continued to be really solid. We're bucking the trend in the industry in terms of being profitable and continuing to grow the business at a, at a really aggressive rate because the solution works. I mean, it's not rocket science, right? Yeah, we have wait, a product. I, I hear you have trouble raising money if you're profitable. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, well, so, so yeah. That's challenging. Uh, yeah, and congratulations on the momentum. Uh, the, the joke a few years ago had been VMworld became storage world, and you know, we spent years talking about, it's, oh, it's, you know, Flash is there, and then the software-defined data center, uh, the only mention of like storage that I really heard in the keynote this morning was Pat talking about, oh, they've got about 10,000 customers running vSAN. So, Brian, a lot of waves going on. We've had a number of conversations about where you fit. Uh, bring us up to speed as to, you know, what are the conversations you're having with customers? You know, what are the important trends to them? Uh, and where your technology, how do you position yourselves there? Oh, sure. So, I mean, I think from customers' perspectives, uh, it's all just storage. They're all data stores and um, the different architectures and the different um, delivery models are, um, they don't really matter at the end of the day. What your CIO, what she cares about is what is the acquisition cost, what's the operational cost, what's the performance that it delivers, the latency and throughput, and um, what's the availability of the data store. And, you know, what we're seeing, especially with the software-defined storage systems and, uh, and, and vSANs, is they work, but they work for small capacities. Um, when you try to scale them, what every customer, without exception, sees is that they add $3 in server cost for every dollar in storage array cost avoidance. Um, so, you know, these projects tend to not be very, they tend to be career limiting, um, you know, and that's why what we're hearing, especially on Wall Street, is that it's V-scam, not V-SAN. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah. But, yeah. but for, for small workloads where, and environments where you're looking to get a, um, uh, a you have a single person who needs to do storage and, and, uh, and uh, manage the hypervisors, it absolutely works. I think it's a, it's a killer, robo and small business solution. Yeah, it, it's interesting because there's the, this growth of solutions that use storage, but they aren't positioned as storage. And vSAN and right. a lot of hyperconvergence is like mm -hmm. that. I let the virtualization admin, I've got some app, I just want a management, I don't have to want to, you know, God, that storage stuff's hard. You yeah. know, so they'll kind of do that pieces versus, you know, real storage. Right, you know, go, go, ask, about reliability yeah, go, ask Pat, go ask Pat what the average size of those customers are. Like my grandmother is one of those customers. <laughs> you know, she uses it. It's 
but uh, yeah, so I come from a heavy technology family, though. So. Yes, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> uh, she was the first VM certified person. There, probably no. So <laughs> clearly, the the part of the market that we're going after is very different mm. from that. Our systems start at well, they get interesting at a petabyte of usable capacity. Our, by far, our most popular model is a petabyte and a half of effective capacity. Our largest system scales up to 10 petabytes in a single system image, in a single rack. Um, so these are big monster cloud scale VMware environments. That's where you know, our customers are having awesome success. And um, you know, it's not just limited to VMware though. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can take the same system, the same SKU, and you can use it to replace data domain systems for uh, backup to disk. The largest Splunk installation in the world is running at one of the US, big US telecoms and is running the same SKU that our customers are using for their big petabyte scale VMware environments. Analytics, which is probably the biggest growing thing, right. an area that Randy is working pretty, yeah. pretty heavily in, uh, yeah, it's absolutely exploding. Which is, which is cool in a sense because we've been, you know, and I, I kind of use the tongue in cheek term accidental tourists. I mean, we sell this system into an incredibly wide range of workload environments and, and enterprise environments, which is why we have a really strong presence in, a, in, in every vertical. I mean, we're strong in healthcare and life sciences, we're strong in financial services, we're strong in retail and manufacturing, we're strong in utilities, we're strong in cloud providers, and it's exactly because of the fact that the system is designed and architected expressly to be very flexible and very adaptable. So, we never shy away from the concept of general purpose storage. I mean, that became very unfashionable about five or six years ago when everything had to be hyper-specialized and fit for purpose. But when we can walk into an environment, and, and as Brian said, most of our customers tend to be fairly you know, mid-size and large enterprises, they don't have one particular type or class of workload. They've got 100, and they're running 100 different storage systems. So we can go in as a consolidation play and say, look, let's take all of that VMware environment, all of that, you know, take your, your data domain and your backup protection environment, your analytic workload environments, and move them off of these disparate platforms onto this one, you know, very capable, very flexible system. They all peacefully coexist. They all perform phenomenally well. It's immensely easy. We have a, a customer presentation uh, that's going to be talking about exactly how easy it is. We have another CUBE session where another one of our customers is going to share the beauty of in integration and orchestration automation using our API. So we kind of have a large enterprise class, extremely flexible, fully composable storage system that you can really plug in anywhere. I mean, we've talked before about how in, in some environments there might be one or two little fringe applications somewhere that require some weird configuration of flash or you know, mem you know, in memory database or something that's five terabytes that's running on some strange system. And, and that's fine, like we're happy to leave that there. Uh, we will go after the other 95% of the workloads in your environment and we'll take them all. Uh, and do so very happily. So. Yeah, it's interesting. We tracked uh, kind of the, that wave of big data, and yeah. especially like Hadoop. And I went to all of these shows, and they'd be like, "Oh, you know, HDFS, you know, don't put it on a storage array because it's too expensive." And when you dug into it, it was a uh, you know a couple of servers sitting under somebody's desk. Right. So it wasn't real storage, like you said, but well, it was cost yep. and it was there, but what, what I'm excited about is when I'm hearing about the new kind of analytics yeah. things, when, when you start talking about you know, you know, AI and machine learning and everything like that, you've got to have, you've got real storage oh, yeah. issues, and how are you attacking the price, and how are you architecting to be ready for those types yeah. of applications? And to Brian's point, the telcos, we've got the, the one running the largest Splunk environment in the world, we've got another, uh, that's running a huge Elk environment. Uh, the, the architect presented at Elasticon this year, that's all running on Infinibox. So again, we, we haven't specifically architected the solution necessarily for those, but our customers, you know, God bless them, bring it in, plug it in, try it, because it's so simple. There's really no downside to experimenting with it, and they discover, wow, this actually works exceptionally well. Yeah, and I think if, if you kind of step back from specific workloads, analytics or, or VMware or whatever, what customers for the next decade are asking for is, is pretty consistent and it's pretty easy to understand. They want to be able to do sub millisecond response times. They want to do very high multi gigabyte per second throughput. They want to do it over petabyte scale data sets and they want to do it at a vastly lower cost per gigabyte than the kind of traditional enterprise storage products. And if you build that, they will come. And I think that's what we did. 
and I think it's a huge part of you know, the, the success that our customers are having and the momentum that kind of our company has right now is just doing all of those things simultaneously. All right, so from a price standpoint, I mean, it, you know, price and simplicity kind of been the things that we've been beating on for the storage industry. Uh, you know, what, how do you position that? You know, what is uh, kind, of, kind of the killer, uh, you know, thing that makes the customers come to you and say, you know, wow, you, you guys are different and that, that's going to solve. Yeah, you know, so you know. we unabashedly, in every uh, business school, you know, whatever, they tell you don't uh, sell on price, yeah. sell on value. And we have kind of been doing the opposite of that since day one. Since day one, the first communication to a potential customer is we put a number out there. Um, that number will be a tenth on a cost per gig basis of, of, uh, you know, of what they're paying today. And it's, a, it's something that nobody can say no to. It, it, it's a demonstration that we're really serious about, uh, about what, what we're capable of doing. So then, that only works if you back it up then when the customer does an evaluation and the bake-offs and the competitive stuff, you have to absolutely destroy everything else out there or else you get pigeonholed as a tier two, a tier three. And I think a lot of the, um, a lot of the newer companies are kind of falling into that where they're, they have traction but they're really not getting into enterprise accounts, they're not getting life safety and mission critical workloads put on them. Um, so we unabashedly lead with price, and you know, at the end of the day, every time you instantiate a cost function reduction in, uh, in storage, it makes new types of computing possible. You put that storage in the hands of developers, and they tell their management teams, here's what we can do with this. We are trying to make storage less expensive. Yeah, and, and uh, although you know, you're not supposed to sell on price, you sell on value, the problem is nobody buys on value, so you still have to be price sensitive, and you have to have a solution that is economically feasible and viable and attractive. So we've got a very, very attractive TCO structure and model that we've used in just about every of our major sales campaigns, and we have demonstrably, significantly lower cost, not just of acquisition, but of ongoing operation. So when you, when you layer all those things together, um, you can sell to the pure technologists who love the kind of robustness and the feature richness of the capability and where they can apply it and how they can apply it, but it also has a very attractive financial story. So when you're selling into the business owners and the kind of you know, other constituencies, it's a, it's a story that everybody likes, so. Yeah, um, a lot of people in the storage industry, it's always you know, that, that, that next thing. Uh, flash was you know, a wave we rode, rode for a while. You know, when I go talk to the storage geeks, it's, oh, NVMe over fabric. Right. It's going to dramatically change everything. It what, is. What, what's your take, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, it's huge, it's huge. Um, you know, it's always a, 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 a catch up game between the net, network and the transport technologies yeah, yeah. and then the, the, the storage media. So, you know, um, NVMe over fabrics is huge, but you know, you have to use it the right way. And I think that it's not being used correctly um, by the marketers, you know, who are running, um, you know, a lot of the storage companies. They're using it as a way to justify their pricing. They're using it as a way to make storage expensive. Um, and it's kind of the, again, it's the opposite of, of, uh, of our strategy. What every customer is demanding from their vendors is, I need my storage next quarter to be less expensive than it is. Uh, this, this quarter, next year, it needs to be cheaper than, uh, than this year. How are you going to do that for me? So, advanced technologies like NVMe and NVMe over fabrics and um, Optane and 3D Crosspoint, these things all have, they're incredibly strategic technologies, um, but you have to use them the right way, you have to, um, always keep an eye on the bottom line and be very suspicious of technologists that are trying to make infrastructure more expensive rather than less. Yeah, and I mean it's always, it's not just the technology, it's the application and I think a lot of vendors in our space have a tendency to focus exclusively on the technology and how to build an architecture around it or, or repurpose an existing architecture more commonly without really thinking about the application of that technology. Where is it going to be used? How is it going to be used? What's the cost structure have to look like? What's the use case environment look like? What verticals am I going to sell it to? What's the channel ecosystem look like? They, they kind of tend to save that for the last, so they develop this whiz-bang 
you know, solution, which is, again, typically an aging architecture that maybe has some new foundational layers of technology or media built into it without really thinking about the end game. So that's one of the many things that I think Moshe and I does better than anybody is he looks at the problem from the outside in. He meets with customers on a daily basis. I mean, he's, he's kind of a maniac in terms of traveling around and meeting with customers. He has a phenomenal reputation for obvious reasons. And he listens, he listens to their problems, he listens to what they confront and what they fight with every day to kind of make a solution that works for them. And then he adapts that to his design ethos. Not, it's not the other way around. So we don't develop something and then go try to force fit it into a market or into an environment. Yeah, uh, last thing I wanted to ask sure. you is, users coming to a show like this, they love to be able to hear from their peers. You've got a whole bunch of customers mm -hmm. telling their stories. What are some of the key takeaways that, you know, peers talking to peers that they're going to be hearing this week at the show from your Yeah, so partner? there's, it's a lot of the same things we've been talking about here. You know, it's going to, it's cost takeout, frankly. I mean, first and foremost, these are in customers that are under tremendous cost pressure. Uh, they have used us as a consolidation platform to take cost out, but deliver a higher quality of service. We have, uh, so we have a, a breakfast we organize, we've got a bunch of our customers. The other thing I, I love about our customers is they have a tendency to be kind of uh, kind of groupies, and I use that term you know, very favorably, because they're immensely loyal to the system, because it simply makes their life better and easier and allows them to focus on other tasks. So they're talking about cost reduction and consolidation, they're talking about delivering higher performance very, very simply. They're talking about the ease of integration and orchestration and automation using our API. So plugging our system in and just, it becomes a magnet for workloads. They bring it in for a particular project and as other growth occurs in ancillary areas, it just gets moved on to the Infinibox because it's incredibly easy. And it's a painless, seamless, frictionless process, so. Brian, want to give you a final word, uh, takeaways for, for the show that you, you want people to have from Infinidot. Oh, I just I want everybody to have a great time. Come by, check out the booth. We have an espresso machine. Um, we'll talk a little bit about some of the computer science behind the system. And but more than more than anything, we want everybody to have a really good time at the uh, at the event. Well, great point, everybody. VMworld always a great community. Uh, lots of great conversations. Everybody geeking out on the technology and getting some caffeine to help them through what is a, a very long week. So we're at the beginning of three days of live coverage here. Double set. Thank you, Randy Arsenault, Brian Carmody, Thanks, for Stu. joining and us. If, again. If you chroma key my shirt, just be gentle, that's all I ask. <laughs> Thank you. All right, we'll be back with lots more coverage. Thanks for watching theCUBE.